Man's Relationship with God First Bible Lesson, Matthew 16, 21 From that time forth began Jesus to shew unto his disciples, how that he must go unto Jerusalem, and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed and be raised again on the third day. Second Bible Lesson, John 2, 17-21 and his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Then answered the Jews, and said unto him, What signs shewest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty years and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? but he spake of the temple of his body. Golden Text, Matthew 12, 40 For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The Altered Truth This gospel will expose you to the true meaning of the concept of destiny. A lot of the so-called knowledgeable people of the world, the scientists, Philosophers and professors of different fields challenge the concept of destiny, claiming that it does not exist. But if there is nothing like destiny, what then exists? The three natural phenomena which many people still dispute are destiny, reincarnation, and resurrection. The entire human life is so interwoven in these things that if they were mere fallacies, why did God choose to exist in Trinity? He is called the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Incarnations of God on Earth This explains why He has three times come to the world. First He came as the Creator and Originator, by which time He gave the world form and life. When Adam and Eve did offend in the Garden of Eden, they wept bitterly and showed remorse. Because of their repentance, God the Father spoke to them through a mighty rock that stood in the middle of the Garden of Eden, intimating them of His second coming and the indices that would herald His coming. He told them that His coming would be revealed by the presence of three precious elements, namely myrrh, gold, and frankincense. God's second coming was when He came in Jesus Christ as the Son of Man and Son of God to shed His precious blood and offer Himself as a ransom for the sins of men and salvation for all. And one of his parting statements is indicative of the fact that he has since come back to this earth the third time. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. John 16:7. All his persecutions and crucifixion were to pave the way and straighten the path for this third advent. But to prove to the world his second advent as he promised, three wise men visited him as a child with gifts of frankincense, myrrh, and gold. Even as the Father used the word to create, so also did he, during the second coming, use the word to heal, feed, give life, among other things. With the word, he shook the earth and conquered the world. All these things show clearly the importance God attaches to man. God has come three times. Those who profess that God has made about seven advents on this earth are wrong. A certain brother even published a pamphlet claiming that God has made seven advents on earth, first as Adam and subsequently as Enoch, Noah, Moses, Elisha, as our Lord Jesus Christ, and finally as leader Alumba Alumba Abu. Many people believed him, irrespective of what is stated in Hebrews 13.8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. To which angel has he ever told, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee? See Hebrews 1.5. But unto Christ it was fulfilled when God said of him, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. The rest of the patriarchs were of the status of the angels, and they had limited and insignificant duties to perform. Our Lord Jesus Christ alone had the status of the Son of God. 
For that reason, he told the Jews to destroy the temple, and he will have it rebuilt within three days. He was the temple of God on earth, and the Son of God. He also enjoined the people to believe in God, and believe also in Him. For in His Father's kingdom are many mansions. If it were not so, He said, He would have told them. He added that He was going to prepare a place, wherewith He would come again and collect us all unto Himself, so that wherever He is, we will be there also. If He did not come to the world three times, the world would have perished. Jesus Christ Offers to Save Man When God asked for a volunteer to go to the world to save man, did any angel accept to undertake the assignment? It was our Lord Jesus Christ alone who accepted to leave His glorious throne to come down to save mankind. He also loved man and regarded him as his fellow brother. The angels were mere messengers who often feel delight in even punishing human beings. Our Lord Jesus Christ was therefore God incarnate as the Son. The other patriarchs who came before Him, He referred to as thieves and robbers. It was Christ who made it clear that God is man, being that He created man in His own image. His last advent had brought peace, salvation, and prosperity to man. No man knew or believed that God existed. Christ revealed the kingdom of God to man and His eligibility therein. Mistaken Identity The angels in the days of old were regarded as God by men. So such patriarchs such as Abraham, Elijah, Samuel, Melchizedek, Moses, etc. were held in high esteem and worshipped by men. This is also how men regard pastors and other clergies today. It is not so cheap to be God. People take God's tithes to man believing that they would be linked to God. These men are deceivers because God is not limited. In Matthew 5.17, our Lord Jesus Christ says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law and the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. An angel speaks as an angel, and a messenger as a messenger. It is only the bona fide owner who speaks with authority. Matthew 7, 28 and 29. The nominations in the Bible bear witness about our Lord Jesus Christ. In turn, our Lord Jesus Christ bore witness of the Holy Spirit, not about any man or angel. No matter how tall or beautiful all the angels may appear, they are the Lord's messengers. Read the first lesson again. First Bible Lesson, Matthew 16, 21 From that time forth began Jesus to shew unto His disciples how that He must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again on the third day. The Cleansing Process in Mankind and God's Third Advent The crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ his internment for three days and three nights, and resurrection have brought mankind peace, truth, awareness about God, prosperity, and salvation. His second advent was to cleanse man and make him fit to be God's temple. But in a disappointing way, man has disobeyed God and has defiled his abode and temple, thus making it uninhabitable. It is for this reason that he promised to go and come back and abide with man forever. Now He has come again to recreate the world. This time He has come as the three-in-one God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. A grain of corn, it is said, cannot bring forth much fruit, except it falls unto the ground and dies. It is only when it dies that it germinates and brings forth good fruits plentifully. Man himself is God's own image. He does not have the image of a tree, stone, or an angel. Thus God has come to teach and reveal all things to His children, not using angels or patriarchs as intermediaries. He has not come to speak to His children in parables. All the creations of God in heaven and on earth recognize and bow unto Him. He is truth and His word is true. The same truth He has come to teach. Our Lord Jesus Christ told His disciples that He would go to Jerusalem and there He would be persecuted, tortured, and killed but that on the third day his father would cause him to resurrect. Those words came to pass exactly as he said. In the book of Revelation, John the Divine, the identity of those arrayed in white garments is questioned. 
And the angel answered that they are those who have come out of the great tribulation and have washed their garments clean in the blood of the Lamb. We have been bought with a price in the Lord's precious blood. We are therefore indebted to Him to keep our bodies His temple. 1 Corinthians 3.16 and 6.19 Clean for Him to inhabit. God does not dwell in the sky or on the mountain, neither does He dwell in a cathedral. Now that He has come in His final advent, man has to mortify the flesh so as to feel His impact. The kingdom of God is now with men, and He is here to abide with men forever and evermore. Amen. This is not the time to have intermediaries between man and God, or to see or commune with Him only in dreams. There is nothing on this earth to fear, for He has brought freedom, peace, truth, and salvation to us. All these have been made possible through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The three days and three nights that He remained in the heart of the earth have been wrongfully calculated by the world. Jesus the Christ said His Father would cause Him to resurrect on the third day. In the days of old, the prophets and people sacrificed unto God as if He needed such things. Those things done by the angels and prophets were irrelevancies. But men nonetheless had to be introduced to something to have them moved or graduated from one imperfect stage of life to a righteous one. This is confirmed in the Lord's reply to the Samaritan woman during His discussion with her. John 4, 19-24 when the Samaritan woman told the Lord that her fathers worshipped on the mountain, whereas his disciples said that there was a place in Jerusalem where God should be worshipped, Christ told her that they, the Samaritans, worshipped what they knew not. He told her further that a time cometh when God shall neither on this mountain or in Jerusalem be worshipped. Today, God has come by himself to establish that long-expected kingdom which would reign forever. It is only those who have made themselves ready by way of holiness who will inherit the kingdom. Ironically, every temple is defiled. It is for this reason that our Lord Jesus Christ said that all birds have their nests and foxes have their holes, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay His head. Men have defiled themselves, making their bodies uninhabitable by God. Because of His ignorance and transgressions, man is scared of God's presence. He rather worships idols and things that are man-made. The joy of this day is immeasurable because the Father has come and has established His kingdom on earth, thus releasing man from the bondage of Satan. Gratifying enough, God now has a place of abode in man. Thus, gone are the days when Christ made this statement as recorded in Matthew 8.20. And Jesus said unto him, The foxes have their holes, and the birds have their nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay His head. Second Bible Lesson, John 2, 17-21 And His disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Then answered the Jews, and said unto Him, What signs shewest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty years and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. The body, God's temple. It is unbelievable to the people of the world that a man could fast for one day, let alone stay for three days and three nights without food and water. This feat has been made possible by the final advent of God. It is a partial manifestation of the challenge of our Lord Jesus Christ to the people that they should destroy the temple and within three days He would resurrect it. The three days dry fasting in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star is therefore God's innovation to serve as men's clinic. Anytime man observes the three days dry fasting, he is rejuvenated and treated. There are many who would not fast even for one day. It then means that such people are not ready to be remolded and to identify with Him. Men and angels, however, could be used as messengers. God remains the same at all times. This explains why our Lord Jesus Christ listened to nobody and took no instructions from any person. He knew the emptiness or voidness of man. Man is blind, sick, plagued, and lifeless. 
Your problem is that you take men seriously. It means you do not know yourself. You are God's temple, husbandry, and city. He said in John 15, 4-6, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without ye you can do nothing. If a man abides not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Man's Position in Creation Man's position before God is very high, in fact higher than that of angel and other creation. The wind, fire, thunder, rain, sun, etc. are God's messengers. Man alone is God's replica, complete with all God's components, such as wisdom, power, etc. Your problem is ignorance and unpreparedness to flee iniquity. Read the Golden Text again. Golden Text, Matthew 12, 40 For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The whole world is fed with the erroneous impression that our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified on a Friday, which sums up to two days and two nights, making the calculation wrong. In all his statements, the Lord Jesus Christ never in any way said anything contrary to three days and three nights. First he said that he would go to Jerusalem, and there would he be persecuted, tortured, and killed, and that on the third day his Father shall raise him up. The second proof of this statement was when he challenged the people to destroy the temple and he would rebuild it in three days. He also said as Jonah was for three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be for three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The people of the world in their assumed knowledge start calculating the three days and three nights in which the Lord said he would remain in the heart of the earth from Friday. However, God has come in this last dispensation to put an end to man's ignorance and eliminate the source of his problems. This is why you in this kingdom are enjoined to refrain from every evil and to keep the temple of God holy. God's Covenant with Man There are many who complain that they cannot fast for even one day, let alone observe the three days dry fasting. The three days dry fasting is so significant in this new kingdom because it serves as a tonic for self-mortification. A time is coming when members of the Brotherhood of the Cross and Star will experience no hunger, no pains, and no problems at all. Once you purify yourself, everything will be yours just for the asking. You will not lament, cry, or be in want if you keep the temple of God undefiled. That remains God's promise and covenant to His people. After those days, he promised to write his laws in their hearts, and that a neighbor shall not teach his neighbor, nor shall a brother teach his brother to know God. For from the least to the greatest shall know him. See Hebrews 8.1 and 7.12. He also promised in Mark 16.17-18 that his children shall drink poison and hold the serpent, but it shall not hurt them, etc. In the light of this, therefore, speak, but the word and your words will come to pass. God is spirit, and he is also man. The heaven is God's throne, while the earth is his footstool. He is in the world and is working, though people see him not. He came first as spirit, and men saw him not. He then came as the sun and quickening spirit. He now has come fully as spirit and man. This explains why heaven and earth are silent and obedient unto him. Man is the Garden of Eden, which is complete with all the beauty, virtues, and glories of God. Man is an embodiment of God's components and kingdom. If we should live according to his directives, there would be no hunger, no sickness, no death, and no problem at all. You encounter problems because of defiling God's own temple, which you are. A man who defiles God's temple faces destruction. In order to escape the impending destruction, you have to keep his temple holy by adhering to his injunctions. It is said that a stroke of the cane is sufficient to the wise. Let those who have ears hear what the Holy Spirit has imparted to the world. May God bless His holy words. 
Amen. Thank you, Holy Father. Brotherhood of the Cross and Star by leader and teacher Alumba Alumba Abu, compiled by George Morales.